Today we're going to be talking about some of the highlights of the recent Premiere Pro 23.2 and 23.1 releases. Ever since the iPhone 13 came out and you could shoot in 10-bit HDR, the issue was that when you took that footage directly into Premiere Pro, because at that time we didn't know how to interpret that just automatically, you'd end up with something that looked like this. I was in fact even adjusting exposure to bring it down a bit. Now it looked fine on the camera, but this was how Premiere was interpreting it. This is what we have now solved. You will now import your iPhone 13 or 14 footage and it's going to automatically tone map that footage for you. Here are the details of this footage, okay? Shot directly on the iPhone, nothing done to it, short clip, 24 FPS. Previously, we would have chosen Rec. 709. We don't have to do that anymore. We're keeping this native. Make a new sequence. Go into your settings here, have the working color space set to Rec. 709. I've got a new timeline here and it's called new HDR into 709. I'm going to grab my iPhone 14 clip, keep existing settings looking much, much better. This is what you got before. This is what you'll get now. One of the things that you can do to get that much closer to the QuickTime reference is you can use color match as a way to sort of reference. What I have in here is a reference shot from QuickTime. Pull this still into the timeline here. We're gonna go into comparison mode, or we can access this via the color wheels and match section of Lumetri. Uh, you always have the ability here to launch comparison view either from the panel or if you have the button already down in your program monitor. So I'm gonna go into comparison view where we have our reference on the left and the current frame on the right. The reference on the left has a scrubber. I'm just going to scrub until I get to that still image, apply match. It's that easy. We have face detection here. This is really useful if you've never used this before. If you're trying to match specifically for interview footage, documentary footage, skin tone, it works really well. Click apply match. It made some very subtle changes. Now again, based on that screenshot, look, it actually sort of blew out the whites of the clouds a little bit. As I'm looking at the greens, they look pretty good. My issue at this point is the blue saturation of the sky. We're gonna go with hue versus sat, which you'll recall allows me to adjust the saturation of a specific hue. Take the eyedropper here. Let's go to a darker blue. If I hold down the shift key, I can constrain that I can't go left or right. The other thing that we can do, hue versus luma, let's go into this here. I'm gonna pull down some of the luminance on those clouds. Come back up here. Also maybe just drop that and maybe do a little overall saturation. All right, now the blue is not exact. Colorist would probably be able to get it that much better. This is an option that you need to enable under preferences. If you're working with a log video color space, and this is off by default, by the way. Turn on automatically recognize log video with the appropriate color space. Otherwise, log video will be recognized as Rec. 709. Sequence locking for offline editing. This is significant because again, in terms of team projects environments, it's so much easier now to understand sort of the status of things. There's lots of new UI to indicate when someone's working on stuff, when there's changes, it's easier to update and to publish changes. And there's a lot of little fixes under the hood as the saying goes, but you can find this on the adobe.com premiere pages at the bottom. There's a, you know, what's new in this release. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.